Hello and welcome once again to Cooking Under the Influence. I'm Sean. If you watched my episode with eggplants, you know that already. Now, of course, when we cook something, the first thing we have to do is get a drink. Because all good chefs need a good drink. Rum, in particular Sailor Jerry, their 100th anniversary. Because I only discovered Sailor Jerry about maybe a month ago. And it's awesome. And cheap. Anyway, we will be having Sailor Jerry and Diet Coke because, as you can tell, I don't really need the full calorie Coke. And now when it comes to cooking, oh crap, I forgot to put rum. That will never do. When it comes to cooking, I'm all about the full calorie, full fat, none of that skim milk, low fat crap for me. Alright, there we have it. Rum and Diet Coke. Cheers. Tonight's dish. Oh yeah, we have to cook a dish, don't we? Lasagna. First thing we need to do is start boiling our lasagna pasta. Fill the pot. I don't have a watch. Okay, while our pot's boiling, We're going to start with another pot, a saucepan, if you will. Now, if you're an Italian grandma, you already know how to make sauce. I am not an Italian grandma. So, I'm going to use canned crushed tomatoes. Muir Glen Organic Fire Roasted Crushed Tomatoes, whatever. They were on sale. Some people go all gaga over that whole organic Oh, I'm not going to use anything that was grown with pesticides. Well, is the cheese organic? Let me tell you something, that organic stuff is a crock. Now, as Julia Child says, Never cook with any wine you wouldn't drink yourself. This is no longer wine. It has turned to sherry because I've let it sit here for God knows how long. Let it sit there for a little longer and it'll turn to vinegar. That's your fun food tip of the day. So we're going to rinse the can out with wine, get that last bit in there, and a little wine flavor. Now true, I'm not an Italian grandma, I was going to make tomato sauce from actual tomatoes, but I'm no fool either. We're going to get actual tomatoes, oh crap, in this case grape tomatoes, and it fell on the floor, whatever. My floor is clean. And those are going to go into the pot of tomato sauce so that we can pretend that it's real tomato sauce. You don't have to tell anyone that it's not. Well, it is real tomato sauce. It's just we started with a base of Muir Glen Organic, whatever the hell it is. All right, I think that's enough tomatoes. The hell, one more. Fresh basil. I like to grow it. Like one of the easiest things in the world to grow. It's growing basil is like growing weeds. Important stuff. All right, leaves are off the stems. And you could chop each singular leaf, each single leaf up if you want, but that's just a pain. Ooh, I have a text message. Twitter. Yeah. Whatever. Make a nice little pile of basil leaves. And roll them up. A nice big roll of basil leaves. Or in French terms, we call that a roulade. Oh, oh, oh. Slice the roulade up, and that goes in the pot with the tomato sauce. Basil goes really well with tomato sauce. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's the sweetness of the tomatoes with the acid of the basil, or maybe it's the acid of the tomatoes with the sweet of the basil. I don't know. But it goes really well. Thyme, fresh thyme. This is what fresh thyme looks like. Yes, I grow the basil, I grow the thyme. It's very easy. You just stick it in the ground and it grows. It's like growing a beard. People say like, oh, did you grow a beard? Like you have to fertilize it or something. You don't. We don't want it to boil. We want it to just sort of simmer. 
All right, now it's really boiling. Let's turn that shit way down. You don't want to boil the tomato, then you just have tomato soup. We're making sauce. Good lord. Crap, I turned on the wrong thing. That's why. It's giving me a pain in the head. Cure for that. We're gonna add oregano. No, I don't grow oregano. Sorry. So I have a big bucket of it here. Oops. That might be too much. Oh well. Ugh. Simmer down now. It just occurred to me I have parsley in my refrigerator. My refrigerator? Why is it a refrigerator? What if it wasn't refrigerated in the first place? And I'm just going to chop that up just for shits and giggles. Parsley is one of those vegetables that's really versatile and you don't have to worry about too much. Now what do I, you don't have to worry about parsley. Like you lay awake at night and worry about Ooh, the parsley. If you smell it or eat it, it's got a very distinctive flavor to it. And if you put it in food, you probably notice that it's in there. But if you don't put it in food, you probably never notice it's not there. So that's one of the great things about parsley. You don't have to worry about it. Nice big handful of chopped parsley. Mmm. Stir. If you need lessons on stirring, then you really just go make a sandwich. Now, if you're going to make a tomato sauce, you have to like peel the tomatoes and get rid of the seeds and all that crap. And I'm not an Italian grandma, like I said. Nor do I have the time nor desire to freaking peel tomatoes. After the water boils, we're going to add some nice olive oil to it. Big, huge, giant slabs of semolina or whatever it's made of. Alright, while we're waiting for the sauce to sauce and the pasta to pasta. Alright, these are Chinese eggplants that I grew in my garden. Yes, I boast about my garden a lot. You have a grilling pan. You don't have to use a grilling pan. You can use whatever the hell you want. Slut. Oh, Jesus. So difficult. Why must this be? God. I mean, seriously? Eggplants are tough. Sometimes. How many times do you sharpen the knife on the blade, on the thingy? Till it cuts. Olive oil in the grilling pan. This is a non-stick pan, so the olive oil is kind of superfluous. That's a big word, superfluous. Use that in a sentence tomorrow or today. Americans, lots of Americans like to use extra virgin olive oil. It has its purpose, I suppose. If you want flavor, use, oh crap, this is extra virgin olive oil. Growing like they're a suspect and you're the FBI. Just waiting. Mmm. Green and red. It's like Christmas. Now, the reason I say use a grilling pan is because you get these nice grill marks. It does nothing for your cooking. Fuck! But having nice grill marks is very handy if you're cooking like a steak or a pork chop or thing that looks good with grill marks. Refill. Grilling, 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 boiling, stewing. You're not cooking unless you have at least three burners going. Why did we uh, grill the eggplant, you ask? I hear you. Eggplant's full of water. We don't want it to cook while the lasagna is baking because it's going to lose all of its water and then you'll just have soggy lasagna. Who wants soggy lasagna? Oh crap, I forgot to refill. Jesus, this is an emergency. Alright, one other thing we want to do while we're waiting for all that shit to do. We need to do our spinach at some point. Oh, this is done. Let's drain it. Colander. I was looking for my olive oil. It's right here. There's worse things than sticky pasta. You know, like 
sitting on a miniature statue of the Statue of Liberty, that would be bad. But you don't want sticky pasta. Butter has a low smoke point. Jeez, obviously. What are we doing with the butter and the pan and the smoke and all that crap? We're going to wilt some spinach. Ow, fuck! You don't have to grow all your own vegetables. You can cheat. Nobody's going to judge you. And if they do judge you, they don't need to be eating at your house. Alright, that big wad of spinach I put in there. Turned into nothing in like however long it was. As you probably gathered, we're making spinach and eggplant lasagna, which is actually pretty easy. It's not much, I mean, well, there's a lot of shit that goes into it. But it's not hard. Assembly is one of the most interesting things. We'll get a pan, a colander full of big giant leaves of pasta. Layer the pan, layer the pasta. Try not to kill yourself while you're doing it. Pasta, layer. Now look how nicely that that is sauced. Okay, it looks gross on camera. Bottom layer, we're gonna do sauce. Ow, shit, it's hot. A lot of times it sticks, you just gotta fucking deal with it, and it hurts. We're gonna make a layer of eggplant. Another layer of pasta. Okay, that's kind of a crappy pasta thing. It's because there's layers, you could use you can use crappy lasagna things all you want. Shit! So meanwhile, I'm dealing with, you know, frickin' second degree burns here. And we're making layers. Alright, next layer, spinach. This cooked spinach is the bomb.com. All organic because there's no pesticides. Bullshit, they use pesticides all the time. I just rinse them off really good. There's more sauce than spinach. Wow. The L in lasagna stands for layers. Oh, damn it. They'll never know. Artichoke arts. Oh, shit. Oh, a layer of artichoke hearts. Let's put pasta on top of this. You ever go to a buffet or like a charity function or a fundraiser or something? And everybody's got pasta. They've got crawfish pasta and pasta alfredo and pasta this chicken mushroom and shit pasta. Why? Because pasta's cheap. Mm. So you're probably going to have some lasagna left over. Fuck, eat it. <coughs> lasagna. We're going to bake it. How high do we bake it? 400. Refill. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Better lighting though, huh? I'm not a big fan of processed cheese, but mozzarella is a pain in the ass to grate on top of the lasagna. This is Parmesan cheese. It's already been grated because I totally forgot to restart the camera after the last um, break thing. Now there's plenty already on there because I did it earlier when the camera was like not camera aimed. And ooh. Let it bake, because it's baking. I kind of fell asleep, slash passed out, um, after I put the lasagna in the oven last night. So now it's the next morning. Through the magic of video, we've gone through the whole night. Uh, I did manage to wake up at some point and take the lasagna out of the oven. Well, maybe a little bad. The whole purpose is to show you that it's easy to, uh, it's easy to cook, it's not hard. As long as you don't fall asleep while something's in the oven, then you can cook well. Don't fall asleep, and you'll be great. So bon appetit. Enjoy the lasagna. I'll do something with it.
Adiós.